Luminex GigaCore is a series of high-performance Ethernet switches designed specifically for the entertainment industry, which is where we are, meaning live events, broadcast, and AV installations. And they support audio over IP protocols like Dante, AES67, and AVB. They are also easy to configure for non-IT professionals. They have a rocket design, which is great for live environments, and they provide various redundancy features too. Today, you will see that Skahoy products can control GigaCores. We'll use a dedicated configuration for Rack Control Uno today, but you can always assign the functionality you see in this video to buttons and knobs on other controllers too. So this is the web UI of the Rack Control Uno. We have already added the GigaCore here. Basically how you do that is you add devices by pressing this button here and then you can search through devices on your network if they are auto discoverable, like I just added a bird dog camera here. And there's typically a lot of devices you can find. You can do it manually as well by searching the like 400 plus devices we at this point in time support from within Reactor. So this is how you add the connection. If you have um, multiple giga cores, and I think if I just reload here, you can see that in fact I do. Um, I have added giga cores that do not exist on my network. This is why they say disconnected. But one of the points is that on my, my selector of giga core switches here on the Rack Control Uno, I can select other giga cores as well. So if you have many of these switches on your network, you can manage all of them from a single panel, which is pretty cool. This is the UI of the giga core itself. It's of course a web-driven UI, just like on our controllers, and you have the full overview of the four ports on the front, the ones on the back, etc. You see port number two is connected. It is the one over which I'm managing the switch right now. So we'll not change that. It's assigned to the management group. And then here we have port number four, which is also connected to my camera. And it has PoE. We can even see what, how much um, power it is consuming at the moment. PoE is enabled on everything apparently. It also has 100 megabits and not one gigabit. And some of these things are already reflected on the panel over here. You can see that port number four, for instance, is lighting up in orange instead of green, which is what is used for one gigabit. So that is communicated. Secondly, we also see that it is assigned to the group called Dante Prime, which is probably not the right one for an NDI camera. So maybe we want to change that. So this has to do with groups and trunks. And that's the main feature of this one and why it's easy for non-IT professionals to use. They have these groups color-coded, set up um, to and be assigned to different ports. And the groups are like VLANs that you can um, use to group devices together and specify rules for what they can exchange of information. And then they have these trunks down here, which are sort of, you know, fusions of these. So uh, one we could choose would be the, the pure NDI, or it could be the one called NDI plus, plus Dante, if that's what we wanted to. So the one way we can do this on the panel is to basically use this. When we are in the groups menu, you see we have different menus here. So if we are in the group menu, we use these buttons to assign different uh, groups. So by using the four-way buttons, pressing the sides, we'll be able to scroll our way over to the NDI group and we can just assign that by pressing it. You see immediately that this turns red. So it is now assigned. But if I wanted to go all the way down and assign the trunk, called NDI plus Dante, I do that, and that is now the one that is being assigned up here on this uh, this group. We can see it in this overview that that is, in fact, the trunk that is currently now assigned to it. What about the PoE? So we can scroll to the PoE menu, and if I press and hold this one now, we'll see that PoE is turned off to this camera. The light around the, uh, the lens was turned off. Now we'll turn it on again. So just press and hold until the lights up red. And in a moment, you'll see that the um, tally light on the bird dog camera and initialization of the camera is now starting up again. So you can control the PoE straight out of the um, Rack Control Uno. And of course, you saw that reflected in the UI as well here. So there's like full correspondence or, or synchronization between these two um, UIs. Inside of the, uh, let me see, port settings. No, port settings won't be interesting for us. But down here in the toolbox, uh, you may know, if you know these products, that there's a number of profiles that you can record, but you can also store them from within this interface. You cannot store profiles from the Red Control Uno, but you can record them. So the ones you have here are actually 
mentioned in this menu. If you go to profile, you'll see that those profiles are now broken out on buttons and you can recall these profiles by pressing and holding these buttons. And those profiles are also the ones you know there from the list. So again, we pull that out of the unit, show it in the displays, allow you a single tactile button press to recall these profiles for your uh, GigaCore switch. So that was profiles. We have the PoE we just demonstrated. We uh, have not looked at port link and we have seen how we can actually uh, change uh, groups for each of the um, inputs on this one. What we have not seen is that there's more than just those 12. There is in fact, what is this, uh, 20 on this one. So if you wanna move on to other ports, you basically use this one port selector. So that is your pager through the ports available on this device. In this case, we have let me see, 20 ports that we can assign in this way. And again, now that we are in the um, a group assignment, we can just do that for any of these. Just find the group, confirm by pressing on the lower edge of the four-way buttons. That's just working. Now, the final thing, port link, that is essentially whether or not the port is turned on, not in terms of po uh, PoE power, but the, um, the link itself. So we could also do that for the bird dog camera, uh, basically press and hold and we'll turn the link off. Uh, on the unit, we see this is now reflected here. It has a little red cross. It is uh, dimmed down by a gray tone. And now I press and hold again and we'll see it's coming back up again to us. But it was not PoE in this case. It was just the data link that we shut down momentarily. Guys, this is um, pretty unique. We have a hardware panel that allows you to control multiple GigaCore switches from a tactile um, environment. Instead of using the web UI, you can use both. They are synchronous, so data is exchanged between them, no problem at all. And um, that is basically this exciting integration we have done with a non-broadcast device, non-broadcast, because normally we control cameras. But in this case, and there's really no limit to it, we can also control any other thing on your network in a broadcast and AV context that you want to put onto tactile control buttons. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to our channel. We welcome your questions and comments, so feel free to leave them below or connect with us on Facebook, Instagram or X. You can also reach out to us via email at sales at skahoy.com or support at skahoy.com. We are always here to help you and we are looking forward to assisting you.